Hey everyone and welcome back to this class, the NumPy stack in Python. Now this has been quite a long section and I'm sure it's been a lot of information to take in. It's actually a lot longer than I anticipated it would be. So since it was so long, I want to do a little summary and highlight all the important takeaways. First, you learn about how machine learning works. You didn't learn any particular machine learning algorithms, but you now understand why that's going to be what you spend the next few years on, should you choose to go down this path. The other important thing is that you understand machine learning as a black box. What are the inputs? What are the outputs? What functions can this black box perform? These are the really key points. This is really useful for the future too, because when you actually implement machine learning algorithms later, you have an API to write against. In other words, you already know what the inputs and outputs should be, so all you have to do is fill in the blanks. The second important point you learned is that machine learning isn't magic. In fact, it's just geometry. Remember, regression means here are the dots, find a curve that fits these dots. Then I can make new predictions by passing in an input x and looking for the corresponding output y on this curve. Classification means here are some color dots, now find a curve that separates these different colors. Then I can make new predictions by locating my input x on the grid and finding which color it belongs to. Next, we cover a very important idea, which I repeat all the time. All data is the same. Whenever the question comes to mind that you want to do a new example on some new data set, remember this, all data is the same. This is just a consequence of the fact that machine learning is just geometry. When we're doing geometry, we don't care what the curves or the dots mean. It doesn't matter if your input is height and your prediction is weight, or if your input is body mass index and your output is blood pressure. To the machine learning algorithm, these are just tables of numbers. The names of these numbers is totally irrelevant. The code does not change. This is why we're able to have the scikit-learn library in the first place. There's only one class for linear regression. We don't need one linear regression class for calculating house prices and another one for calculating blood pressure. It's just linear regression. We use it on numbers. Next thing we learn about is where to put data files. This is definitely less important than the other things we talked about, but still useful. Remember that this section is primarily to fill a lot of gaps that I see in students today. So all the scripts in this repository load data files from the folder large files, which is assumed to be adjacent to the class folder. Next, we now understand the basic structure of a machine learning script. There are really just a few steps. Number one, load in the data. Number two, build your model. Number three, train your model. Number four, evaluate your model. It's basically always going to be this way. Now, some people might ask, sure, we know how to build a spam classifier, but how does it work within a full email application like Gmail? And this is where programming experience really comes into play. For most of you with programming experience, this is probably very obvious. If you've worked on a code base with other developers, you already know how to interact with code that other people have written. So in a real world scenario, your coworker might write some functions for you, like put email in inbox and put email in spam, and then you have a function receive email, which you're allowed to modify. At this point, it should be pretty obvious how you'd apply your model in this scenario. If this is unclear for you, then what I suggest is improving your general programming skills. Join a team of programmers and get used to working with large code bases. This is really the only way. Next, we discussed some categories of supervised machine learning models and looked at their relative pros and cons. Now this was just a very rough outline and I hope you treat it as such. Generally, yes, linear regression is a weaker model than a deep neural network or a random forest. But there are certainly instances where linear regression outperforms deep neural networks and random forests can't be used at all. 
so a simple linear model is always a good first thing to try. Finally, you now know what it means to learn machine learning. Learning machine learning is not learning the scikit-learn API. In fact, we've probably just done that in less than an hour. But I want to reiterate, the purpose of me teaching you the scikit-learn API is not so that you can become proficient at the scikit-learn API. Learning machine learning is about learning the actual machine learning algorithms that we used. How does a random forest actually work? How does a deep neural network actually work? How can you write your own? That's what learning machine learning is.